Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuir. In this class, we will discuss about recursive descent parsing. In our last class, we given an intuition about introduction to parsing, different parsing techniques. So please watch that class and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, recursive descent parsing. This is a top-down method and this follows backtracking. So top-down method and backtracking. How we how this method is working? That we are going to understand in this class. We'll take a simple example context-free grammar and understand the method. Then we extend this concept to the our context-free grammar for identifying expressions and statements that grammar which we have discussed in our previous classes. Let's take an example grammar. S tends to C A D. A tends to A, B or B if the grammar is like this. A is non-terminal, S is non-terminal. In recursive descent parsing, we will write functions for each non-terminal. S is a non-terminal, we have to write a function for S. A is a non-terminal, we have to write a function for A. For each non-terminal, we are going to write a function. So what we will write, what, how it is going to execute that we are going to discuss step by step. Uh, we are writing function for S. Yes. Similarly, we have to write function for A. Like that, all the non-terminals, we have to write this function. Uh, so how this recursive descent parsing functions works? This grammar intuition is already provided in our theory of computations. How we are writing the programs for grammar. Programmatic intuition is provided in our TOC, theory of computation course. If you don't know what this context-free grammar means, please watch those classes and come back here. Coming here, yes, is a function because it is a non-terminal. What this says is loop to choose all productions. In yes, we are having one production. So this loop executes one time. One production S tends to CAD. Similarly, in the A function, loop to choose all productions. How many productions are there? A is having two productions. A tends to AB is one production. A tends to A is another production. So take the productions one by one. Loop to choose all productions. In this loop, this coding is there. This is the point you have to understand. Take the first production, execute this code. Take the second production, execute this code. This is how you have to execute the code. So in that chosen production is there. Assume that the first production has been chosen. C S tends to C A D, capital A D. This production is of the form S tends to X1, X2, so on XK, where X1 is the first symbol X1, second symbol X2, third symbol X3, that is how it is written. X1 means the first input, uh, the first symbol in the production. If it is of the form like this, for I is equal to 1 to K, how many symbols are there on the production? S tends to K symbols are there. That's why this loop is executing K times, means take the first symbol apply the logic take the second symbol apply the logic that is how it has to execute if you take the first symbol if xi is a non-terminal is it non-terminal c no is it it's terminal so this condition is fail else if xi is equal to if it is non-terminal obviously what's remaining it will be a terminal xi equal to current input symbol assume that this is the input string we are going to check on our context free grammar CAD what's the current input symbol C C is exactly matching to the current input symbol XI is C here XI is C here C equal to C so what's going to do here yes input symbol matches then advance input symbol to the next this is our input symbol this advance to the next input symbol we are moving to next input symbol so we have identified C S tends to so how grammar executes check for input symbol C yes we are checking for input symbol C it's already matched if this matching has not happened else if if this is failure then we go to the else part there is some mistake we have to stop here not to stop here understand it properly we are stopping this first loop 
if one more production is there for this yes tends to some other production is there you have to check the next production if all the productions are failed then you have to stop this is very very important to understand if all productions are failed then you will stop it that's why it is going for back tracking we are checking for one production if it is not matching again go back and take the next production check the conditions again go back if it is failure again go back and take, take the third production like that we are keeps on going back tracking going back we will we'll tell you the example of a back tracking this is how the context free grammar is evaluated using recursive descent uh, recursive descent parsing method uh. now we'll understand what is backtracking is uh. let's take the input symbol cad the first function we call here is yes yes tends to cad the first input symbol is c cc matching now it is going to expand expand means calling the function a a is having two productions how it is going to execute take one production apply it if it fails take second production apply it if it fails take third production that's why it is backtracking a has been expanded with a b but our input says that c a d a is matching here but b is not matching so this production whatever the production it has chosen here it is wrong go with another production means we go we went one step back and doing again that is what backtracking means so a take with a now next time it is going to take a yes it is matching c a is identified and d is identified yes our grammar is accepted this is how it is going to check for the syntax analysis Similarly, we have to write this recursive descent parsing for our expression grammar. In our last classes, we discussed about expression grammar. C tends to T E dash. This is going to identify expressions that belongs to plus and star symbol. Each non-terminal for each non-terminal, we have to write a function like this. But think about is this is the recursive descent parsing is a good method? is a good approach to solve our context free grammars no this is not a good approach why it is not a good approach because it is going back tracking think about in a big picture you know first classes in the syntax analysis we have a shown an example context free grammar to identify pascal coding syntax pascal co syntax for pascal code syntax for identifying if statements loop statements and expressions and some uh, other statement uh, four statements we are going to identify how many non terminals will be there think about in a big picture uh, in order to identify c language how many different statements are there how many operators are there this grammar only for identifying plus and star we are having relational operators though uh, we are having a uh, shift operators uh, how our grammar will be it's very very big so function calling it's a uh, function calling another function function calling another function function calling another function function calling another function like that how much space is needed to execute that compiler in the programmatic understanding so these are the problems with the recursive descent parsing so check entire language so the big picture means check the cfg for entire language so this is what about recursive descent parsing uh, this is a backtracking approach hope you understand the concept if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.